Hello and welcome to another chapter of BA Cloud. Building a private secure Kubernetes environment in the cloud can be a complex task. In this tutorial, I will guide you on creating a secure and private Kubernetes environment on Azure using Terraform as infrastructure as code tool and GitHub Actions as a CI CD platform. So let's dive in. Let's take a look at the architecture diagram that we will be creating. In the first step, we will create a log analytic workspace, a unique environment for log data from Azure Monitor and other Azure services. We will send all the logs from the created services to the log analytic workspace. Next, we will create a hub virtual network with two subnets one for Azure Firewall and the second one for Azure Bastion Service. In the Azure Firewall sub subnet, we will create an Azure Firewall with public IP and firewall policy that permits our services to access all required destination FQDNs for proper functionality. In the Azure Bastion subnet, we will create Bastion Service that lets us connect to virtual machine using your browser and the Azure portal or via native SSH or RDP client that's already installed on your local computer. It provides a secure seamless RDP SSH connectivity to your virtual machines directly over TLS from the Azure portal or via native clients. The next step is to create an AKS virtual network with four subnets, system subnet, user subnet, VM subnet, and pod subnet. In the system subnet, we will create a private AKS cluster with a private endpoint that allows us to limit the access to the cluster API server to only within Azure network. Also, we will create a system node pool and enable Azure Active Directory authentication to our API server. We will add user node pool to host our workloads in the user subnet. We will set up a several components in the VM subnet, including an Azure Container Registry to store our Docker images, an Azure Storage Account for boot diagnostic logs, a Key Vault for securely storing our Kubernetes secrets and certificates, and a Jumpbox Linux VM that will enable us to connect to our AKS API server safely. Next, I will create VNet peering between the Hub VNet and AKS VNet so they can communicate using Microsoft Backbone infrastructure. Please ensure there is no overlapping of the IP ranges. The next step is to attach a route table to each subnet. The route table directs all traffic to Azure Firewall instead of allowing direct access to the internet from the related resources. We will create a private DNS zone for each service and attach it to all connected VNet through a VNet link. Now let's overview the Terraform and GitHub Action script files. All the scripts and the GitHub Action files are available in my GitHub repository. I have included a link in the description below. First, I configured the Terraform Providers file with Azure RM Provider and set up an Azure Storage account as a backend for the state file. Let's move to the main TF file. In the beginning, I configured a few local variables. Each resource I create has its own module in a separate folder such as AKS creation, node pool, and the private endpoint creation. I start by creating a log analytic workspace. Then I create the networking components, beginning with hub resource group and virtual network. Next, I created an AKS resource group with a virtual network. I'm connecting the virtual networks with virtual network peering resources. I'm adding an Azure Firewall to Azure Firewall subnet and the route table for the AKS cluster that routes traffic to Azure Firewall. I'm moving to create an Azure Container Registry for Docker containers, a private AKS cluster, and adding a role assignment to create access from the AKS cluster to our Container Registry. Next, I'm creating a storage account for boot diagnostic settings, Bastion host, and Azure Jump Server VM. I'm adding another node pool to the AKS cluster. The next step is creating a key vault for storing our Kubernetes secrets and certificates with a private endpoint and a DNS zone. I'll complete the script with the creation of a private DNS zones for all the resources. We need to follow a few steps to connect our GitHub Actions pipeline to, to the Azure environment. I have a script in the scripts folder that performs a few steps. 
The first step is to check if you already logged into Azure CLI. If not, please connect to your Azure environment. Get some details like subscription ID and tenant ID. Creating an Azure Active Directory application, configuring service principle, creating a role assignment to our Azure subscription, and creating a federated identity credentials. And the last step is creating a secret in my GitHub repository with GitHub CLI. If you don't have it, please install. To run the script, you need to install a few CLI tools, Azure CLI, GitHub CLI, and JQ. All the required links you can find in the description area. To use an Azure storage account as a state store, we must create a storage account with a TF state container. I already created in my environment. Another step we need to do to run the Terraform file is to create a container in the Azure storage account and upload the script that will install a few tools like kubectl, kubelogin, helm, and unzip in our Jumpbox VM. Our GitHub action is straightforward. Firstly, I log in to Azure and test the Azure CLI. Next, I check out the Git repository to the managed runner and install a Terraform tool. Finally, I run Terraform with a few variables saved in GitHub secrets, such as SSH public key, storage account name, and storage account key. Let's start the workflow, which takes approximately 20 minutes to complete. I will return after it's finished. The workflow was completed in 80 minutes. Think about how much time it would take to do it by hand. Let's go to Azure portal and see the resources we created. In the Hub resource group, we can find Azure Firewall, Bastion Service and Private DNS zones. In the AKS resource group, we can find the AKS cluster we created with managed identity and the route table. Last but not least, the other resource group, where we can find resources like virtual machine, storage account, key vault, container registry, and more. Let's try to connect to our Jumpbox VM. Select the virtual machine and click connect. Select more ways to connect and go to Bastion. The default username is azadmin and I will select the SSH private key from the local file. I will choose my private key and press connect. Now I'm connected to my virtual machine securely with Bastion service. To connect to my AKS cluster API server, go to your cluster page Select connect and you will get a detailed explanation of how to connect to your cluster API server. I already run these commands. When I'm trying to run the command kubectl get namespace, I'm getting an error, which means that my user does not have permissions. To fix it, I will go to my AKS cluster, to access control IAM, select add, choose add role assignment, and I will select an Azure Kubernetes Service RBAC admin role. But you can select the role that best fits for you. Then I will choose my Azure AD user and select Review and Assign. Now it works fine. I'm securely connected to my AKS API server with Bastion and Jumpbox VM. I'm trying to run kubectl get nodes and I'm getting an authorization error. If I need more permissions, I can add them in Azure portal. So today I demonstrated how to establish a secure Kubernetes environment in Azure while implementing a best practices. Additional layers of security can be added, but I will cover it in the future chapters. So please press like and subscribe to follow the channel for more content. Bye bye and see you next time.